one week left in the summer 21 regular season and the top seed has been locked up as the Duyes boys would love for everyone to know. So there you go. But every other seed is still up for grabs. And uh, we're going to try to break that down and play into what will be the last week of the regular season with playoff implications and the top four teams getting a buy. And so that's what's at stake. The Duyes boys have their buy and the other three buys that get, you know, those teams right to the quarterfinals are still up for grabs in week seven. Welcome to the week six postgame show. I'm joined by Jose, Logan, and Kyle. We'll get to them in a second. I don't even know what game I want to start with from week six. I think we should start with the first really game of the night and seven o'clock featured some big time matchups. Let's get to the werewolves who let's just start, start early guys. Uh, the werewolves took down Lob City 90 to 83. Jose Mercado was doing his thing, but Brian Heston and Gito 40 proved to be too much. Um, I know Jose was definitely over there. We'll go to him first. I do kind of want to go a little quickly. So we'll let Logan chime in at some point as well, but werewolves win. So now they are one of the four teams that are four and two. So there you go. We got a little log jam at four and two, but Jose, what did the werewolves do that maybe surprised you? I mean, I know there was some, you know, I'll take credit for kind of motivating them with the power rankings from, from the week before, but what did they do to, uh, to get the win, Jose? Man, the Werewolves have are a completely different team right now. And you know what, what's been winning them, not only this game, but previous games, is just everyone's stepping up, especially Gino, Will Watkins, Dave. They're all they're all contributing right now. They're all giving production on uh, on offense and they're playing really good defense with, with with Brian in the back end, blocking shots and getting steals. So that 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 has been what what's been pushing the werewolves consistency in production from five players. Yeah. And I would say really hot shooting as well as we look at the box score super quick, 54% from the floor, 43% from three compared to, you know, in the forties for lob city, which is still good. Logan, you know, werewolves surprise you. Uh, no, honestly, uh, I actually talked to the werewolves on Twitter. I, they, uh, they told me they were very disappointed in their rankings and the power rankings. And so uh, I think this was their, their chance to make a statement. And I think they did it. They out rebounded Lob city. Who's I'm pretty sure is still the number one rebounding team in the league. And uh, they were able to get it done in every aspect of the game. And now Jose Mercado is just continues to make everything to be completely honest. Yeah. And so, you know, um, Jose Mercado had a huge game, not enough as now Lob City goes to four and two. The Werewolves are at four and two and the Werewolves have that tiebreaker. As I mentioned before we started the show, the first tiebreaker is head to head. But if we have, you know, more than two teams tied, one of those teams would have to beat every other team they are tied with for the head to head tiebreaker to take effect. And if somebody didn't play or if there's a triangle action going on where this team beat this team but lost to team number three, then we're going to go to another tiebreaker, which will be differential points scored. There's a ton of different things that we're going to go to at that point. Let's hope we don't have to get that far. Um, one team that is not worrying about tiebreakers through six games is the Duyes boys. As I mentioned, the lone unbeaten, they took down the ozone boys, which was a 12 point game, but was never really, I don't think, you know, close in that fourth quarter. And by close, I mean, single digits. I mean, the game was still competitive and close and, uh, but I think the Duyes boys kind of had control. Kyle, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but, you know, Duyes boys with the win and lock up that one seed. Yeah, they had it. Uh, they had it under control right from the start, making sure they're keeping the lead safely, comfortably. Uh, there were at times uh, starting in the second half where uh, they might have started running out of gas a little bit. Uh, lead did get tied up into single digits, but um it's that clutch free throw shooting that the boys do, and they were able to extend it back to double digits, hang, hang on to the lead comfortably, and get that one spot, just like you mentioned. Yeah, and so now, you know, we talked about the Duyes boys, the Ozone boys, three and three, and so them and Good You are three and three, which right now, if I can, if I can count, those are a six and seven seed. Those are two teams that, you know, don't feel like a six and a seven seed in a 12-team league, that's for sure, and so we'll see after week seven who goes where, but that's going to create some interesting first round matchups, some interesting quarterfinal matchups, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, Ozone's actually playing the next week. So that's actually going to be the head to head matchup deciding who, uh, who gets the higher seed. There you go. And we're going to preview a little bit of week seven towards the end of this for sure. Cause we're going to try to bring, you know, the, uh, the playoff picture 
into focus here. Let's get to that 8 p.m. game that did happen, which you guys were both watching, the halfway crooks take down the Mambas. And I think it was really a thing of, you know, size, um, you know, versus the lack of size. Um, you know, let me just say it's a man's league and there's no reason <laughs> it is, it is. And the only reason I say that is because certain players like to, you know, we, we know, we know Shane Patrick talks and then he does back it up from time to time. And he's definitely not afraid and doesn't back down some people, which you guys, I made sure to make very clear, you know, on the Mambas like to talk and then maybe get caught ducking and get caught, you know, running out of the way instead of blocking a shot. And so just putting that out there, you know, I make a business decision all the time, guys. I, you will not catch me in a poster. That is for damn sure. But I also don't, you know, avoid them necessarily. I think, I think there's a big difference, but let's get back to Jose on this one. Um, you know, halfway crooks with the win. What did they do to impress you? Well, it, it, it's been what I've been, uh, you know, saying and, you know, seeing all season. It's just um, – just being consistent throughout the game, not only through offense, but defensively. Um, you know, that first half, you know, the Mambas, uh, uh, for the most part, the halfway crooks were up, you know, by 10, but the Mambas cut it uh, close, you know, in the first half. But in that second half, I seen the consistency that I, that I, that I was finally, you know, looking for, you know, uh, good offense. And then uh, the stops, the, the defensive stops were, were helping them. We're helping the halfway crooks get into their offense and uh, made it a seamless transition into turning it into a blowout in that second half. Yeah. And so uh, let's, let's get to Kyle quick. Anything you want to say about, uh, you know, people avoiding uh, confrontation, <laughs> Kyle? <laughs> uh I feel bad for the Mambas, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to see a team go have no wins on the season. Like, I, I actually thought this was their best opportunity. Pretty head-to-head -head kind of matchup. Kind of, no, no disrespect, though, but kind of bottom of the barrel in, in terms of the standings. Um, I thought this was actually going to be a lot closer game, but, yeah, you guys really shocked me. One stat that I did like to see, you guys – <laughs> out doubled your rebound count compared to theirs. You had 42, hmm. they had 21. Yeah. And so, you know, a big uh, advantage on the glass and uh, yeah, uh, let me just say it again. It's week six, you know, one week away from the playoffs. I'd hate to see the halfway crooks in the playoffs Put it that way. <laughs> I'd hate to see it. Let's just, let me just smile and keep it moving. Uh, let's get to Logan and we're going to get him to break down um, good you and the Orcas. And so I think another shocker, you know, we talked about the werewolves uh, to me, not as much of a shock just to bring some context to that. The werewolves took Lob city to double overtime two finals ago. And so with everything on the line, those teams battled it out, you know, good. You was undermanned, but Logan, the Orcas didn't just, you know, take control with their size. They, you know, had this one kind of early on and then never looked back. Uh, yeah, they were very dominant on the glass and everywhere inside the paint. They were getting their buckets easy. Good. You was just fantastic in this game. Um, I can't pull up the box score. And okay. I'm not really sure why. That's okay. But I the, I did the schedule see, page if you have to. Yeah, I can also get you the link. But yeah. And we can. But I did I did good. see a lot of a lot of good from. I, I think the orcas are just struggling right now, and I think come next week they'll find a rhythm and they will come back. But right now it is just all it is just all over the place for them. And I really, really hate that because I really, really had high hopes for them coming in. I thought they were a great team, especially through the first two weeks. But uh, they have really kind of uh, slumped off. But uh, good you continues to look good every single week almost. Yeah, and so, Jose, before we get to you, the stat I want to mention super quick is good you shot 25% from three and only had five guys, right? So when you're undermanned, you know, your guys are going to get tired and then the legs start to go and – you know, 10 of 40 from three for good use, not going to get it done against the Orcas. That's for sure. Right. Um, yeah, it, it was kind of frustrating to watch, you know, good you struggle because they're so used to having those guys to come off the bench because uh, good you really relies on those guys to come off the bench, you know, fresh legs in and uh, they're very, they play very good team basketball, they're very consistent. And uh, it was just tough, but the Orcas, man, I got to give it to them. You know, they came out, put the put 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 the gas to the pedal, man, and and they just kept kept it on, kept it going. They did not stop the onslaught. They did not ease up at all. 
and took advantage of like you know uh not good you not having uh all their players that's right and we talked about good you being three and three and having a huge week seven matchup this pushes the orcas to four and two and so they join the warriors the werewolves and lob city the warriors did get a, a win over sin city this week and so we talked about the werewolves and lob city already let's get to that last game and we'll get kyle in on this one ball don't lie and stampede and so ball don't lie they get their second straight win if i'm if i'm correct and they take down the stampede and so now both of those teams sit at two and four so you know we see kind of the couple teams at two and four a couple teams at four and two but uh kyle you know ball don't lie we got ellis and, and grant again i think it's those two but ellis couldn't miss right oh uh, you're telling me ellis was in there he actually uh what a nice uh, tweet about me i don't know <laughs> if anyone go. saw it though but uh yeah, he uh, used the quote that I uh, said last week on, I think it was on the podcast. Yeah, he said on the podcast, and I said when, uh, and this I was talking, I believe I was talking about, I was talking about someone on ball online. I said if they shoot 80% every game, if it's at least someone, they're guaranteed to win. My, I guess my words of wisdom <laughs> paid off, and it came true. Ellis was killing it out there, like, he was taking advantage of the open threes. He had six of it. That doesn't happen by by accident. Uh, and he was just getting the uh, the ball moving. Granted, his normal thing, of course, uh, shooting fifty percent from the uh, from the field, and uh, brought everyone else along. It was just great team one. Yeah, let me just jump in. We'll get to Logan quick because I know ball don't lie. You know, two in a row. That's a huge improvement for them, and they're going to look to carry that into the playoffs, but a very, a very lukewarm take, Kyle, you know, if, if you shoot 80%, you're going to win, you know, let me, I'll, I'll say it. No shit. Right. Well, <laughs> any team, any team that shoots 80%, but Hey, Hey, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So there you go. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not wrong. Logan, you know, ball don't lie in stampede two teams that are going to look to kind of pull an upset, you know, come the first round of the playoffs. But what'd you see in week six from these guys? Uh, in my personal opinion, Stampede has got to has got to get to the ball better. They are not playing very very aware defense. They are getting allowing easy buckets inside, and uh, ball don't lie really exposed that. Grant Rosenberg again continues to be a walking highlight reel. I am uh, really impressed by Grant and uh, ball don't lie. They just they they looking they're looking really really good, and I feel like they pull an upset in the playoffs hundred percent. Yeah, and so let's do this really quick as we talk about those playoffs. I'm going to get the week seven matchups pulled up here. But if you guys want to open up those standings, yeah, we got some, got some good games in week six. If you guys open up those standings, I'm going to ask you a question about that in a second. Ozone boys, good you. We're going to kick off the night. Warriors halfway. Crooks could be interesting and change some things. And Orcas, Duyes boys, um, you know, every game is obviously going to matter for those standings. But Orcas, Duyes boys could be big for the Orcas who are looking to try to get that by, right? And so which team, let's say, out of the top four or five, because I know there's a couple teams there. So which team not named the Duyez Boys, Lob City, Werewolves, Warriors, or Orcas, do you guys think has the best chance to make the final four? Okay. So that leaves you with teams six through 12. And obviously there's four teams in the semifinals, right? And so which team kind of do you think has the best chance to pull an upset and get into that final four not being a top four seed. All right. I'm going to go to, I'll go to Kyle first, put him on the spot. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to say Orcas because they did get a, they did get a cheap win with Sin City not playing against them. So that's the reason why they're four and two at the moment. Um, I want to say Ozone Boys because they have shown up every game. Uh, they put on a good show offensively. Uh, they can come back and play solid, uh, solid defense, though. But it just depends on who they play against. Because some of these teams in the top four, like you know, Duguay's boys, clearly Lob City, it, they just have such a high-powered offense that they just there's just nothing that you can possibly do if they're just running right by you and they're just taking hitting the shots. Yeah, Logan, who you got? Um, I really, I really, really like ball. Don't lie, but I'm going to have to agree with Kyle and I'm going to have to go to the ozone boys. They have shown up every week. They do the work. They play the defense. I think they have a really good shot. Nice. Jose, you know, as much as I want to go with the ozone boys, Jeez. they just young. 
and it <laughs> shows <laughs> it just shows like with their inconsistency like on defense and not only that but like offensively i i don't know man i like good you when they have a full squad like they those dudes like they really know how to play together that's the thing you know and i think depth is going to be something that's going to be very important in the playoffs and one thing good you has is depth they sub in whoever comes off and it's the same production you're getting on the floor so that's first my personal take on it yeah i'm glad somebody mentioned good you let's put it that way because uh that was a team we all thought could be the number one seed a couple weeks ago, right? And some things don't go their way. Duye's boys close game. Some players don't show up. And now they find themselves at three and three and, you know, having to win a first round game to get to the quarterfinals where I think they I think it's safe to say they're a top eight team, right? They're definitely one of the eight yeah. best teams, um, which is what the quarterfinals are supposed to represent. And so now they're going to have to fight their butt off to get there along with, you know, teams five through 12 in the standings there. Guys, Good job. That's where we're going to leave it. Uh, get ready for the playoffs. So with that, we have games on Tuesday, August 10th, and the first round of the playoffs, meaning teams 5 through 12, will play on that Wednesday, August 11th. So get ready for that. So by this time next week, we'll be down to eight teams left in the Summer 21 uh, Rhode Island playoffs. Guys, thank you very much. And uh, everybody watching, thanks for tuning in.